All right, today we are going to talk about uh, cell reference formulas, how to lock things properly uh, so we can replicate those formulas. This is probably one of the most important things you need to know to be really effective in Excel. Um, as usual, I have this uh, Excel sheet uh, or workbook saved um, on a Google Doc that you can uh, click the link for down below the video here. So let's get started right away. Uh, let's say in this case I have a bunch of sales. So the first sale was this much, second sale was this much, etc. And I want to know what my tax burden is on each one. Uh, and so I'm going to use the, the sales tax rate I have over here uh, to do a simple replication. Uh, so to multiply, you know, figure out the tax rate uh, or tax amount for this one, it's just going to be equals to tell Excel that we're doing a formula. I'm going to hit the left arrow key uh, to like I've talked about before. Uh, you know, it's quicker than moving my hand over to the mouse and back. So uh, if I hit the left arrow key, it's going to do B2. I'm going to multiply that. So that's either Shift 8 or the little star or asterisk over on your, your 10 key. Uh, I recommend 10 key as much as possible uh, if you're going to put, you know, if you're going to do basically anything because it'll make you faster too. Uh, and then I'm going to click on the tax right here or arrow over to it. I think in that case the mouse is fine. Uh, but I just want to multiply B2 times F1, okay? Uh, and so that's going to tell me how much uh, sales tax there should be on a $1,565 sale, okay? Uh, this isn't the most efficient way to replicate this formula. So the cell references are good because it allows us to, to replicate things pretty quickly. Uh, but in this case, it's going to have a problem because when I try and drag this down, um, uh, it's going to not work. Okay, so you'll see my B3 reference. So now it's going to reference the next amount, which I want, um, but it's going to reference F2, uh, which is an unpopulated cell. To fix that problem, all we got to do is lock our cell reference of F1. So I'm going to rewrite this formula. I'm going to hit equals again. I'm going to hit the left arrow again. So now I have B2. I'm going to multiply that uh, by F1 again. Uh, and this time when I'm here by F1, I'm going to hit F4, or, or if you have a newer computer, a lot of them are doing F and F4. Um, uh, but if I hit F4, it's going to give me dollar signs around the F. The first dollar sign is going to lock the F. So if I drag this formula over, copy and paste it anywhere, um, it'll remain F. It'll always be F. Uh, and similarly, if I go down, if I copy and paste it down, or if I drag the formula down, the 1 is going to be locked by the second dollar sign. So no matter where I move this, it's always going to reference F1, okay? So I hit enter, uh, and now when I drag that down one, you'll see uh, it works. So B2 times F1, then B3 times F1, then B4 times F1, etc. That's what I want it to do, uh, and by locking the reference hitting F4, I've done that. Uh, you can type the dollar signs in if you prefer typing, um, but generally I think F4 is a little faster in this case. Now you can also, you know, grab the little bottom right here, you know, my cursor changes like I've been doing already, uh, and drag that formula all the way down. In this case, I have, you know, 300 uh, rows, 350 rows. It, it takes a little bit of time and not a lot to replicate that formula, but that's still not as fast as I want it to be. Um, uh, but I have at least calculated all those. If you want to be even faster, especially if you're doing thousands of rows, which at times happens, um, right? Um, so if I delete hit delete real quick and hit up. Now I'm back here. Uh, it, actually, if I want to replicate this all the way down the fastest, if you have a row or the column next to it here for it to reference uh, like I do, I, I can uh, put my cursor back over here where my little black cross shows up and then double click and it'll fill exactly the same thing down without me having to do anything. So it's much quicker to do it that way. And then if I want to get to the bottom, I can hit control down, like we've talked about before. Uh, it did fill into my totals row, which I don't necessarily want. Uh, so I'm going to delete that out. Uh, and then we can do things like sum these columns up to see uh, stuff like that. And this, uh, again, we can type formulas out. So I can hit equals sum, open parenthesis, uh, and we started at B2 colon B three, four, five, right? So I can type out a sum formula like that uh, and get the total. Uh, but that's, again, not my fastest. In this case, I'm going to use an, um, uh, something called an auto sum. Uh, so if I hit Alt equals, 
Uh, just like when I double clicked, Excel is going to guess what I'm trying to sum up in this case. Uh, you know, sum B2, B345, just like I typed it out before. So Alt equals will sum columns up for you. Okay, so again, I can go over here, Alt equals, um, and now I have that. Okay, so now I know what my total taxes are and my total uh, sales were over whatever period this is or whatever customer this is, what, however we're tracking this. Okay. Um, so that's a nice, easy look at that basic thing. Let's take another look at locking. So we'll do a lot, uh, a couple of different formulas, and we'll be locking different things in this case. So let's talk about an amortization table. So I bought a car for twenty-three thousand dollars. I put three thousand dollars down. The interest rate is four percent. So I can calculate the payment using equals PMT, another formula built into Excel. Uh, the first thing PMT needs is the rate. Um, uh, in this case, it's going to be 4% divided by 12. Uh, so we're assuming monthly payments on the car. So the rate is going to be annual uh, divided by 12 months per year. That'll tell you what the monthly interest cost is. Okay. Uh, and then there's a comma. The second argument in this formula is N per, which is just number of payments, uh, 60. So 5 years times 12 months, 60 payments. All right, comma. We move over to the next argument, present value. Well, it's a $23,000. I've already paid three. So I owe $20,000 on the loan. Negative 20,000. Future value is going to be zero because I want to pay the loan off completely. Okay? And so that thing will tell me I'm going to pay this much per month for that car. Okay? Uh, my balance right now is now 20,000, right? 23,000 minus three. Uh, and so now I can calculate my first payment's interest. Uh, and interest is just going to be what was the balance? times one month of interest, since each payment's going to be in a month. All right, So one month of interest, just like we did before, is going to be 4% divided by 12. $66.67. Okay, There's my interest payment. Now, if we think about what we should lock or not, uh, what's going to happen is each time I make a payment, the balance is going to go down. And so each time this interest gets dragged down, it's going to reference a new balance point because the balance is going to change. So I don't want this B8 reference to be locked. But B3 is my interest rate, which uh, from this setup I'm assuming is going to be fixed. All right, We're not going to do floating interest rates on this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit F4 on that B3 portion of it to make sure that that stays locked. Okay. All right, so there's my interest payment. Uh, I know my total payment is this, so the amount that's going to principal from my total payment uh, is just going to equal the loan payment minus the interest portion. So 66 of my dollars here are going to go to interest. Uh, the rest of it's going to go to principal. And so that tells me what my new balance is. All right, so my previous balance minus what I just paid in principal gives me a new balance. And again, if we go here, uh, let's make sure the right things are locked. So we're referencing B4, uh, which in this case is the loan payment. And that is going to stay the same every month. So I need to lock that. F4. C9 uh, is this interest amount. And it's going to change each time because it's going to be calculated on a new balance. So I want it to float. So I hit Enter. And now everything should work because this one is going to reference previous balance minus principal amount. Each time the principal amount is going to change because our balance is changing, our interest is changing. Okay, uh, And so this should build a nice little amortization table out. We can do the same thing we did before, only now we can fill all three of these formulas down at the same time. So I highlight all three formulas, double click, and it should fill the amortization table down. And you'll see my balance goes to zero in month 60, just like we said it should. All right, so we've paid it off in 60 months. <clears throat> All right, so that's fun. Uh, also, having a little amortization table like this has some other advantages, like I can, uh, you know, add extra payments. So if, what if I want to pay an extra $25 to principal each time? Oops, not 225 an extra $25 to principal each time. I can see uh, a couple of different things. Uh, oh, why did Skype pop up? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we go down to the bottom. We can see that actually now the loan pays off somewhere between uh, month 55 and 56. So it saves me four payments at the back end. Uh, we could also then look at, okay, that how much interest did that save me? So if I sum up uh, 
all of my interest payments. You know, I paid $1,951 in interest on that. Whereas now if I hit control Z back a bunch of times to the original, my original cost in interest was uh, alt equals, oh, not control equals, alt equals, there we go, uh, 2099. So, I've, you know, you can see how much you save in interest payments and stuff like that. So these little models are nice and handy. Uh, not just for teaching about amortization, but it has some other benefits for if you're actually doing loans and things like that, okay? Let me show you one more thing. So I'm going to go over to uh, the last tab here, uh, and we're going to common size uh, Coca-Cola's income statements for the last four years. Um, a common size statement just looks at everything as a percent of revenue, uh, so we can see uh, trends and things like that in our costs being better as a percent of revenue or worse as a percent of revenue over time, for instance, okay? And so that just means I want this divided by this. That'll tell me what percent this is of revenues. I want this divided by this. That'll tell me what percent this is of revenues, okay? And what that means is we can't use both dollar signs this time uh, when we're locking a cell reference. Uh, so for instance, I'm going to go over here, equals this over this. It better come out to 100%. So revenues is 100% of revenues. Um, uh, if I lock the denominator, which is I want to divide everything by B2, uh, so I'm going to lock that F4, right? And then I drag it down one. So now it's going to divide uh, B3 by B2, and it's going to tell me that cost of goods sold for them is 39% uh, of revenue. So 39% of the revenue is going to creating the good itself, right? Uh, and so I can, you know, then drag that sort of thing down, and that's that's fine. Um, it's going to give me all the ones I that it has values for over here. Uh, it's going to give me the percents I want. The problem with locking the denominator, though, is when I drag this over, you're going to see now it goes to 102% uh, because now I'm dividing uh, 2012 revenue over 2013 revenue, and that's not what I want. I want uh, now I want to see what the cost of goods sold was relative to 2012 revenue. To do that, all I have to do is instead of putting two dollar signs, uh, this time I want the row reference to float. So I want it to move, for 2012, I want it to reference C instead of B. Uh, so I want this reference to float. So I take away that first dollar sign, but I still want it to reference row two the whole time. So I want all of these, uh, when we use them, to reference uh, the revenue up here in two. So instead of two dollar signs, I just lock the row reference, but not the column reference. That way when I drag it over, now it's still 100% because now it's C2 over C2 uh, and it's going to lock down. So now it's going to be C3 over C2, C4 over C2, etc. Okay? And the nice thing is I can then drag that over, uh, double click it down. Oh, it doesn't like it because of those two. Double click it down and now I have percents for all those things. Okay? So sometimes we don't want to lock uh, both column and row. Sometimes we only want to lock row. Other times we might only want to lock column, which means I put a dollar in front of the B, take the way, away the one in front of the two. So there's lots of things we can do with this. Once we, especially once we start adding in logic statements and stuff for data management, this becomes extremely powerful. This ability to reference cells uh, like that, you know, uh, and it allows us to start doing things like updating. So what happens if my interest rate goes up to five percent? You know, what does that do to my payment? Well, my payment goes up to three seventy-seven forty-two, and now instead of paying you know twenty-one hundred dollars in interest, I'm going to end up paying uh, twenty-six hundred dollars in interest, etc. So, uh, thanks. This is my second. You know, this video is just the second in a series, so we'll keep working through more things. Uh, I will see you next time.